Good evening, everyone. I'm Tom Cherry Holmes with Irata Online and the FujiNet Project with our latest test. As some of you know, Moswald has been hard at work unifying both my work with the multilater and his work with modem 850 to produce what could be seen as what a production firmware might act like, but not necessarily look like, for this is still very much a prototype and test but we wanted to take and show some compound functionality. In particular with Multilater and Modem 850, the D device and R device simulation respectively. So with that, we'll go ahead and turn on an Atari 1200XL with FujiNet here and let it boot into config. Within a few moments, we'll be greeted with the config screen, which will connect to our network and provide hosts and slots that we can connect to. Right now everything is empty. We'll start by actually taking and mounting a disk on Errata Online containing copies of a modem. In this particular case, a modem 6.3. We'll mount it into drive slot number one, which corresponds to D1. And we'll go ahead and mount it as read only. Now that this is mounted, we can hit the option key for a moment to mount and boot the resulting disk image. Now a modem 6.3 is being loaded over the network. You'll notice right here that we're using the Altera 850R handler. We're doing this because as of this moment, the R emulation does not support type 1 polling, so it cannot load the handler from FujiNet itself just yet. It's coming though. So be, please be patient. We'll go ahead and load a modem 6.3. Just a random version of a modem that I picked up from public domain. This is very close to the version that I used when I was younger. In fact, this was one of the versions that I was using when I was younger. A modem 6.3 is actually an enhanced version of A modem 4 and A modem 4.2 that was originally written by Jim Steinbrecher, who put this in the public domain as a program listing, and so it was subsequently extended by a whole bunch of people. You see right here. We'll go ahead and select a a smart modem right here. This mostly pertains to the dial directory, so where it doesn't really matter to us too much. We'll start by verifying that the modem is working correctly. And right now we're at 300 bits per second. Since it's tied into the, uh, since it is actually tied into the 850 emulation, each corresponding change to the 850 serial configuration also changes the configuration of the underlying modem. So we can change the baud rate to 1200 bits per second and see that we're now at 1200 bits per second. Not only that, but we can also change the translation as well and find that the modem handles a tasky end of lines and backspaces just as effectively. We'll start. By going to a particular Atari only BBS running in a TASCII. Of course, like most Wi Fi modems, you can send a dial command corresponding to the host name and the port number delineated by a colon. And within a few moments, we should see a connection request if I type that in correctly. Actually, let me double check and make sure that that's actually correct. I think it might actually be 9000. Let me see. Ah, that would be it. So within a few moments, we'll see it here. Connect in. Hit return. And here we are in all our Atasky glory connecting to an Atari BBS. I'll go ahead and enter in my user number and my password.
and we can see right here we're just pushing along just fine now I will point out that uh, the performance of a particular terminal program is highly dependent on the input buffers that it sets up and how quickly it can take and fill and drain them. The basic terminal programs are not as effective as the pure machine language terminal programs that came later. So this particular terminal program runs just fine at 1200 bits per second. It can do 2400 marginally, but it shouldn't go any further than that. That's not a fault of the FujiNet so much as it is just the ability for the Atari to take and drain the buffers that have been passed to it and what it is actually providing for those buffers to push over uh, once concurrent mode has been established. Since this is a task, you get all sorts of effects like the ability for uh, animation and custom menus here. Go into the file section here. We'll go into file section one. We're in PD stuff, and let me see if we can download something. If my ratios are actually good enough here. Because I have used this particular BBS a couple of times. So I may be out of my. Let's see. So standard X mode, I'm sure. We hit uh, select, we hit receive, go to file name, and within a few moments, we hit splat, ready to receive, and here we go. Here's our program ready to come across. And this was one thing I really did like about these early uh, Atari modem programs like this. They showed the actual data being transferred across and did quite a good job at it. So you could, the Atari was first and foremost a very visual and very aural machine. You could see the data coming across and in a big way you could hear the data coming across. And as we've been developing and debugging FujiNet, it's become very indispensable, not only to see the data that's coming across, but to hear the beeps and to be able to diagnose serial I.O. problems just by hearing discrepancies in those beeps. It's something I've missed from later machines. We'll go ahead and uh, let this uh, finish here and then once this is finished we'll actually take and log off of uh, this particular uh, BBS here. I just wanted to show here that uh, not only is a TASCII working exactly like it's supposed to, not only can you use pretty much any modem program that you want to be able to to throw at it, but you'll find that um, you can also transfer files just fine as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that, we'll go ahead and uh, exit out of the file system. Exit from the file system section entirely. And we'll log off. Yes, exit stage left. I really do love these uh, Atasky screens. They are truly beautiful. So there we go. Standard modem operation. And um, it works the same with ASCII displays as well. Not only that, but the Play-Doh terminal client works, as, works really well as well, as you saw in a previous video. But what else can we do? Well, let's take this a step further. First, we will go ahead and reset the FujiNet. And go back into config to mount a different disk image. Again, we connect to the network. 
and we can see that our previous disk image is ready to be mounted again. Instead, what we'll do is we will go to um, FujiNet, uh, actually to Errata Online, my server here, and we will mount a copy of BBS Express. We will mount it read write. This particular image is a MIDOS 4.53 image that's approximately half a megabyte in size, containing a complete BBS Express installation, very stock installation, all compressed to move to fit onto a single drive. We go ahead, mount, hold down the option key to disable basic in this case, and boot into MIDOS with the R handler here ready to go. And we'll see here in just a few moments, MIDOS screen. And if we go ahead and launch bbs.com, we will see BBS Express loading up. And since BBS Express is a large program, this does take a moment. Now the astute viewers among you will have noticed what I'm about to do next. But for those of you who haven't caught on yet, we're loading a BBS. We're going to have the FujiNet listen for incoming connections and to connect to them, to allow other machines to connect to them, just like you would in a traditional modem setup or if you were using a terminal server or uh, another embedded computer as an embedded terminal server in the past. Now all of that can be handled entirely on the FujiNet, with the FujiNet handling not only the Wi-Fi modem duties, but also the uh, disk storage as well. Or you can split that up across to uh, SIDE cartridge, if you wish. The possibilities here are endless. You can mix and match. There's a great deal of flexibility that can be exploited here. And as we can see here, we're waiting here. We're waiting for a call. So for the next bit here, I'm actually going to bring in an emulated Atari. And we're going to connect in through uh, Bob term here and we're going to actually hit through the magic of emulation go to warp speed for just a moment bring up Bob term make sure that we have our translation set uh, to Atari make sure our baud rate set okay 2400 baud sure no problem and put ourselves into terminal mode, verify that everything is okay, control M, sure, AT, control M, just fine, and we're going to go ahead, I have a speed dialing option set up already, and we'll go ahead and dial in. We'll see that the ring happens, Express picks up the phone, and we find ourselves on our BBS Express installation. So enter password or new if new user. We'll just go ahead and just pretend that we're a visitor. Go ahead. No, we do not wish to be issued a permanent password because we want to just be guests. And we'll see the status up, the status uh, updates on top. Everything good so far. And we are greeted with a basic, very stock BBS Express installation running on top of FujiNet, serving its disk image over the network from a cloud server roughly a couple thousand miles away, uh, and then some. Let this all sink in, just how absolutely insane that this is. 
We'll go ahead and just for the sake of testing here, we will uh, upload a file and we'll upload a copy of Play-Doh. Sure. Uh, it's 113 sectors approximately. Uh, actually, sorry. I'll just say. We'll do it again, sure. How many single density sectors? Sure. It is a uh, object. And it lives in Kane's communications. Sure. Ready to receive. We go ahead, start from menu, send a particular file using standard X modem, and now we're ready to send the file. And we'll see right here, within a few moments, as soon as it decides to buffer, it will start sending the file as soon as everything synchronizes up. Give it a few moments. And there we go. You can see the file coming across. And we've now demonstrated that we are now able to take and send and receive rather effortlessly using the FujiNet. So not only can FujiNet act as an effective Wi-Fi modem for uh, dialing BBSs, it can also serve them pretty well as well using existing uh, BBS software and everything else. Not only that, but while it is doing this, it, while it is also handling the, the Wi-Fi modem bits and pieces, it is also handling disk emulation pieces as well. The disk here is not local. The disk is on the cloud. The disk is being re read and written to from the cloud simultaneously while it is also handling the Wi-Fi modem duties. It could also be handling the print operations as well. Writing to a network printer, writing to a virtual PDF file, it doesn't matter. But all of these function, pieces of functionality can be running at exactly the same time on the ESP, on the FujiNet itself. And the system, the Atari, as far as it's concerned, is none the wiser of what has happened. I think this is a very powerful concept and one that once we work out the particular uh, bugs and issues over the next year, the flexibility of this system will become apparent. Now keep in mind, I haven't even talked about the um, I haven't even talked about the end device yet. The end device is also coming up. The end device will give you access to TCP and UDP, even over TLS, to access existing internet services on top of everything that's being done in this version of the firmware. And as new bits of functionality are implemented, we'll be able to take and provide them in such a way that the firmware can be updated over the air. Something to think about for sure, isn't it? We'll go ahead and uh, say goodbye to this particular installation. Yes, we're sure. Hope we enjoyed our visit. Yes, we did. Now, since uh, bits and pieces are still being implemented here, I am having to hang up manually, but uh, these are things that will all be refined over the next few weeks and months. There's a reason I said that it's going to take us a year to implement all of these bits and pieces, but we're able to take and demonstrate all of these different bits of functionality and to prove to you that all of this will be able to work and work together. So with that, we'll go ahead and end this particular video. I hope you all enjoyed it. There is so much more coming. And if you guys can help, if you want to help, please feel free to help. If you want to donate to the Patreon, please don donate to the Patreon. If you want to cheerlead and spread the word about this thing, please do so. So with that, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this. Until next time, guys. 
have fun. <laughs>